don't depend on other people telling you what the rules are. Right. Uh, because there's always something lost in translation. Um, have the information to know how to get the answers you need. Um, and then um, it doesn't mean that you won't listen to somebody else. It just means that you you listen with the knowledge of knowing at least what you're what you believe you already know or your perspective. And it may cause you to go back and do some more studying. Uh, it does for me. Um, so pay attention. And, and uh, if you really, if you really want to advance in, in our industry, it is, um, you know, just about keeping up with the knowledge. Hello, and welcome to the Elevator Careers podcast, sponsored by the Allred Group. I am your host, Matt Allred. In this podcast, we talk to the people whose lives and careers are dedicated to the vertical transportation industry to inform and share lessons learned, building upon the foundation of those who have gone before to inspire the next generation of elevator careers. Today our guest is Chris Strong, owner of Elevator Safety Training Services. Chris started in the industry as an apprentice after serving two tours in the U.S. Navy. After 10 years in the field, Chris joined his brother and another partner, building a firm which included inspection, consulting, and education. Chris loves to teach and is passionate about safety and helping people take responsibility for their own learning. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm excited to be able to talk to you. I mean, it's always a a pleasure to talk. And and this time we get to dig a little deeper into you, your career, your company, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, good. I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm excited about it. Good, good, good. So I, I want to start with my favorite question, which is tell me how you got started in elevators in the first place. Well, I uh, I moved back to Florida and uh, I was a single parent. And had a, back from where, if I may? Uh, from California. I was in the, uh, two tours of the Navy. Okay, good and, for you. Uh, I, I lived, I, well, I moved back from Hawaii back to California and um, I was, you know, it was I was struggling because I was a single parent and yeah, yeah. Um, so I moved back out to Florida and um, my brother tried to convince me to get into he was in the elevator business and tried to convince me to get into it and I said no and did some other things for a little while and until uh, it became you know obvious that I needed I needed to do choose something different path. it sounds like yeah I mean, I had, I, I did some hard jobs. Uh, oh, I substitute school talk for a little while. I think that's a hard job. I mean, I just, oh my God. If you're a school teacher out there. Uh, you don't get paid enough. Yeah. My Especially at, at the junior high or middle school level. Yeah. Oh, oh they are rough. They yeah. Are rough. You think you're rough with your teenager at home. Imagine having a whole class. Multiply that by 30, right? So you did that for, for, a, Oh, I did wow. that for, I don't know, six, six months or so. Uh, and then eventually, um, my, uh, 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 my brother convinced me to get a job with the elevator company. And that's, that's what I did. I got a job with uh Mallory elevator company. Right on. And right there in the panhandle, right? Aren't they in, uh, Mariana? Yeah. Well, we had, there was a relationship already. My, my dad, and uh, my stepmother had met uh, Tim and Laura Mallory years prior um, down in somewhere on the uh, uh, church couples thing. Now, Tim and Laura are a little bit younger than my dad, but um, the next thing you know, uh, they're visiting. Uh, they're up in the panhandle. Tim thinks he's going to. You know, it's a good idea, I guess, probably to move up there. And so he moved his business out of Davy. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Well, he opened, just opened up another part of it. Okay. Up in, uh, they still got the one down in Davy. And okay. so uh, that's where I started. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So your was your father in the elevator industry as well? or, or No, my dad friend? was. My, my family had an architectural meal workshop. Uh, okay. You know, they built cabinets and all mm-hmm. these other. Sure. things uh, just about anything you can do with wood and um that was from you know from the 40s wow okay. and uh you know kind of no one no one from the family had 
you know, kind of taken over. And uh, so uh, around 90-ish, I guess, I wasn't here. Sure. Um, they, they, um, they, they sold. Okay. And uh, my dad subsequently um, took a job doing uh, as an instructor with uh, the prison system. And so he was teaching uh, prisoners how, how to make cabinets, how to make, you know, uh, things that they could use, um, including uh, building cabinets for the, the offices, I guess, that they had. And um, so, yeah, he was never in the, I think, it, I think he built the cabinets maybe for Tim's office in, over in Bluntstown, cool. where he yeah. originally was. So when you started, were you in the field? What, what was your first assignment? No, I was actually in manufacturing. And, um, it, it, you know, it just didn't go very well. I, you know, it wasn't real. There were, uh, I mean, it's I'm okay with it, but there was there were some other things going on that uh, just didn't appeal to me. And so um, they asked me if I wanted to go into the field, and I said, yeah. Cool. And um, so that was kind of... You know, in the field, you it is what you make it. Sure. Um, sure. You can decide, and that was a little bit, uh, a little bit like the military, in that you you got different groups of people. Uh, you got the people that are just there and waiting to be told, you know, and then the ones that you know have a little bit of initiative, and then the ones that have a lot of initiative. And uh, and I was always a go getter. Okay. And so uh, it was an easy thing for me to get into and uh, really uh, kind of make my own way with it. And then, of course, you know, my brother was a brother, a smart guy and uh, real sharp, uh, you know, especially on this stuff, too. And so I had and, uh, and people around me, I had, you know, smart people around me. So I had, you know, if I had to go to them, I had somebody to go to. Yeah, yeah. How, how long did it take before things really started to click? You know, it sounds like manufacturing didn't, but, but once you got, yeah, field... yeah, probably a year, year and a half at the most, uh, I was, you know, kind of, uh, on my own. It wasn't much longer after that. I was kind of a supervisor. Okay. And, um, so, uh, we had, I had a lot of large contracts. Cool. And so, uh, on service some, is that what you mean? Or, yes, or service, or okay. service. Um, yeah. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, those, uh, I don't know who has the contracts today, but I, I think it's all mostly, uh, TK has them today. Okay. But, um, yeah. And so, uh, that's, that's where, that's where everything started. And, um, uh, like I said, you know, it was, uh, uh, as much as you apply yourself, uh, sure. as much as much work as you'll put on yourself or whatever, people will let you have it. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll get out of the way. And, okay, well, you want to do that? Okay. You know, if you wanted to work overtime, well, if you wanted to work, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, I was a single parent up until uh, ninety. My wife's not watching. Ninety-eight. Okay. <laughs> Yes. I won't tell her. <laughs> I won't tell yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just make sure that I had my math right. Right. Good. Um, good, good, good. Yeah. So 25 was 25 years in, uh, in April. Wow. So wow. Since you, since you started, how long was, uh, what did you, you know, spend in the, in the field and doing maintenance? Um, all, well, about 10 years. Yeah. About yeah. 10 years. And, um, then, uh, around the 2000, um, uh, time frame, we, uh, um, it, things, things were changing. The code was changing. Um, some of the things in Florida was changing. We had, uh, we were set to adopt for the first time, a standard building code. Okay. Which was going to change a lot of things. We had our first building code uh, in 2001, and this was something that would have, would be, would was built up since uh, Hurricane Andrew, which right. had happened 10 years prior. 
And um, so that that changed a lot of things and really took off um, with uh, people getting you know certified, being qualified. Um, you had to have a certificate of competency. Uh, you had sure. to pass the test in the state of Florida to get a, to be able to work. Originally, when they had the certificate of competency in the Florida, you only had to have it if you worked on state jobs, oh, which wow. is why I got, which is why I initially got mine, because everyone wasn't required to have it. Sure. Eventually, everyone, well, now, of course, everyone is required to have some sort of certification and right. be registered in the jurisdiction where you work. Sure. So, yeah. So after um, so 10 I, years, then, then as, as this uh, code's coming through, the, the changes are being adopted and everybody's getting certified, what, what changed for you? Um, maybe 9-11. Okay. Yeah, 9-11 changed a lot of things for me, and I realized I needed to do something. I wasn't, I wasn't in the right place. Okay. I knew I wasn't in the right place because I was in a federal courthouse on, uh, that morning. And that uh, shook I you thought, up a little bit. Yeah. 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 I still go by the, uh, the place that I stopped. I hear you. Yeah. Life changing. It was a big day. Yeah. Yeah. I know what the possibilities are. And, sure. Uh, the, um, one of the things that my wife had been calling me at the time and saying, uh, where are you? And I'm like, I'm on the way home. Get kids. You know, I know a place where we can go um, because you don't know. Uh, you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. And um, I was, the kind of work I did in the military gave me a, 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 a maybe an unfair insight into what the possibilities yeah. were. Sure. And, you know, I'm just looking to the sky, you know, and looking for paper trails and looking, and it's a crystal blue sky day. And, sure yeah yeah and i'm driving down uh 19 coming from albany georgia back to uh, sure. i'm doing 100 miles an hour there's nobody on the road and uh i all i got is the radio and and i could see the sky and they're talking about you know all the planes are down i mean that's such mm -hmm. a huge thing and um i'm i'm just locked in and uh out of the blue Somewhere between Albany and, you know, Thomasville, a crop duster. Comes sliding he, across the road. <laughs> he pulls up right over, ow, right over the road. I don't know if I had a shotgun, I'd have stopped and unloaded. He probably, you know, poor guy, he, has no, he probably has no idea. He probably didn't know what was going on, yeah. He's just flying, you know, he can't hear nothing anyway. Sure. And uh, he's he's been out there flying and spraying, and it's probably you know within thirty or forty five minutes of it happening anyway. Wow! And so, but it scared me. <laughs> I thought I thought we me. were done. Yeah. By then, wow. then, you know, just and uh, and I guess uh, that's probably uh, what changed it for me. And then I um, I went uh, uh, Bill and Lee or Lee had started something and Bill was going in there in with him and my brother and, uh, said, come on. And, yeah. uh, and they, one of the things that, that we, uh, I, I like to think anyway, that we, we were so good together because, um, my, uh, well, Lee, Lee was such a code, um, person, Sure. Um, and he'd been, you know, the guy at the jurisdictional level in Florida, uh, Bill, my brother had been the plans examiner. And of course, in addition to code had all this recent, uh, heavy, you know, elevator experience, um, uh, just a lot of knowledge. And I was, uh, um, I was a piano man, you know, I'm the details. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it really worked good. The three of us could get together and, and talk about and really bring the best out. I like to think anyway. Uh, and that's one of the good things about being with them sure. uh, over time is that having the ability to, you know, uh, a lot of times 
even people think, well, you know, it, it, things, it, well, it really doesn't matter. Well, no, it does matter to me because something you may say may make me think about something in a different way and, uh, and it benefits somebody. Yeah. Um, so, so let's, let's back up just a second. So you, you mentioned Lee by my first name, but, but what's his last name? Just so Lee Rigby, I'm sorry. That's all, yeah. it's all good. No, I mean, it sounds yeah. like he and, and Bill is your brother. Bill Strong. Yes, that right? Bill Strong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they sound like they huge mentors for you. They were, you know, absolutely bringing you along, absolutely. pulling you in the first place. Uh, yeah. And then that's all. You know, we, uh, you know, we would occasionally still have that, uh, you know, those hallway discussions. Uh, we we had we had pet names for it, but it's 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 not appropriate, really. To... <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I'm sure our listeners. Do. Yeah. Those yeah. cuss and discuss uh, moments that you can have, you know. You got to have them. But, I mean, they got to have yeah. them. In the end, you know, I think that, or or at least I like to think that that we, you know, a lot of times relied on each other, um, yeah. or especially bouncing ideas off of each other, or uh, or you saw something. Just you know, uh, and I, and a lot of people in the elevator industry can relate. It you think that you've seen it all, you haven't. Never, no. And uh, you can go to another town or city, or you go to your neighbors, and you're likely to see something you've never seen before. Uh, and it, good or bad, I, I'm not just. It's not about. I like seeing uh, new or old sure. elevator equipment, and just just looking at um, the difference in in where we were and where we are, and. Uh, things that we did, you know, especially with electricity sure. um, and, and the, the size of the equipment, uh, especially, you know, with the advent or uh, of computer chips and, and stuff like that um, uh, really changed, really changed the industry. And you could put, you know, in a shoe box, something that it used to take, you know, an eight by 10 room. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. So what was it you three created? You said that started something. Oh, well, uh, vertical assessment associates, we did inspections okay. first. And we also, as a, as a result began doing consulting because it kind of went with people were always calling and, and, sure. and with complaints. And, and of course, Lee and Bill having been with the state, um, it was an unusual for them to, to uh, handle complaints and stuff like that. Um, we, uh, um, and once we started doing inspections, I mean, uh, the state privatized the inspection process uh, one one of 01. Oh, wow. Okay. And so um, we uh, began uh, doing inspections and eventually, um, you know, we had, you know, there were 20, we had 28 field inspectors. Wow. Yeah, we were one, if works. not the largest, we were one of the largest in the country. Um, we did a lot of, uh, a lot of things. And uh, so not just Florida, we, you were, you were. Yeah, we were doing right Mississippi out. and eventually, mm -hmm. you know, Alabama. We, we had branched out and we're doing uh, once Las Vegas um, okay. privatized, we, we started doing uh, things there, and uh, that's. Uh, when you say things, I don't want to get into that, but you know that. Well, I, I mean, I ways. mean inspections. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean inspect. We started doing inspections there, and um, the uh, if, if that's an interesting, uh, interesting place. Uh, there's some definitely some nuances, and uh, sure. yeah, you could yeah elevator inspectors out there couldn't even get into the hoistway. Wow. Not supposed to, right? Yeah. You do everything from outside the horseway. I'm not sure how that works, but okay. Well, that's, that's, that's just so it works on paper. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so, so this, oh, go ahead. Um, then uh, with through the inspection process, of course, uh, we had a lot of things, uh, you know, that we learned along the way about handling people of course. Uh, and, um, I got tasked with a lot of those things. Eventually it got down to where, 
Uh, we were also, Lee was doing uh, expert witness, you know, legal cases, sure. Sure. stuff like that. And um, Bill was doing most of the consulting or he was running the consulting side. And, uh, and that left me with the inspectors. I got you. And, okay. and uh, it was, was, it was, it was interesting. Uh, trying to get, you know, we were hiring um, guys. Uh, most of the guys we hired would retire from the union or something like that at, sure. at 58. And we would hire, they get their QEI and we'd hire them into the inspection process. And of course they have all the experience in the world, but you can't, you can't duplicate. Yeah, um, true. And, 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 Usually safety practices, uh, which, you know, weren't as prominent as they are now, but at least they are, were in a position to recognize them. But still, when they would go out in the field, they hadn't, uh, they weren't experienced in having to tell me what a 1981 elevator is doing compared to, you know, or 1985, you sure. know. What, what could be on the interior of the elevator versus, um, you know, a 1968. Wow. Yeah. And so um, a lot of elevator inspectors would defer to the latest code or the code maybe under which that they got their certification under. And that wasn't always the right thing. Trying to um, have people uh, consistency, trying to yeah. have people consistently noting the same violations, making it mandatory that they had to document a violation in a certain way mm. so that it wouldn't uh, use uh, or, or the elevator company wouldn't see that as some other work. We, we had elevator companies, we've written up the door restrictor before um, and the uh -huh. elevator company would sell them a new door restrictor and the mechanic could go out there to, to put the new door restrictor on and, and get out there and say, well, it's got a door restrictor. Right. Um, what I, I just adjusted it. I don't need to replace it. Well, too late. The customer's already paid for it. Right. Now, what do you do? I mean, everybody's got, you know, egg on your face. The elevator company calls you and complains because you're private industry. Now and you're in the customer service business. They don't have to have you. They can have, somebody else so yeah. you know yeah. trying to make consistent for make consistency um or make the elevators inspectors consistent so they see you know see the same things and write things the same way so it makes sense it's got to make sense to them right so that they can see yeah that, okay this, this needed to be written up versus what was this guy doing so how you had 28 people i mean it sounds like that was a certainly a challenge trying to get everybody on the same page, getting them to be consistent, getting them to refer to the proper code year, you know, all of that. So how long did that, uh, did you do that before you decided to? In about 2000 and uh, this maybe 14 or so, we sold all the inspections to ADIS. Okay. Okay. And uh, so uh, we made them the biggest <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so then uh, we we had already created uh, to another company, ESTS, okay. and okay. Lee was kind of running ESTS. And Bill was running uh, vertical assessment. And so um, I did a little bit with both. I did mostly consulting. Uh, we didn't do, you know, really uh, any inspections. That was part of the cell. Uh, to not compete with them on the inspection level, of course. Right. And um, so, uh, and then um, Lee was looking to slow down a little bit and whatnot. And uh, so I said, well, you know, I'd like to fill in and take uh, more up to speed on this is uh, something I like to do. You know, I, I, um, I, um, it's in my it's in my lane, if you will. Right, right. So tell me, right, so tell this, me this just for me just and for I guess and our listeners, listeners, but what does ESTS primary uh, primarily do? Well, primarily, um, 
it's uh, safety training. I mean, it is technical safety training, but we also do um, other other types of training uh, other than just the code to code people. We also provide training for um, emergency personnel um, who may be removing you from a stuck elevator, or we provide training uh, using the same requirements to authorized personnel who may assist emergency personnel in the removal of stuck passengers. And it, uh, it's, it's really critical, I, I believe, you see it, see it more and more. I know elevator technicians are very familiar with, you know, the fire department showing up and, uh, and they don't know how to open the elevator door. Right. Uh, maybe they have the power off, maybe they don't. Um, they, maybe they take the pickaxe and knock a hole in the door mm. big enough to you stick your hand in there and unlock it. Yeah, I've seen that. No, I'm and sure. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's uh, in, you know, for authorized personnel, it's necessary for them to have some sort of a training to, to understand some of the safety precautions that are involved. You know, they don't show up with a big heavy jacket and gloves and you know they just show up in their work clothes and say here's somebody knocking on the other side of the door and hey i'm stuck in the elevator um and you know things that they can do and understanding some of the safety precautions are necessary for working around elevator equipment um and we also do we still do uh, expert witness uh for legal cases for right. accident cases and stuff like that so, so primarily it's teaching them you know, Right, right, right. You were talking about how, you know, Lee was kind of moving this direction. Are you are you pretty much running ESTS at this point? That's your I'm running ESTS. Okay. Um, Lee is still with me. Okay. And uh he's um I, which I'm which kind of my he's uh, my my security blanket. There you, you go. Know. Love it. Um so uh even though, you know, I don't know that I need it, but I sure do I love him. You know, I can't, I, I, uh, he's like a brother. So, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, I wouldn't want him to be, not be here. Yeah. 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 Play no, with my brother, even though my brother is doing primarily, uh, he does, um, consulting and I, you know, do as much of that as I can. And he's, he's been understanding about it, um, because I'm doing both things and, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but because uh, we're all getting older, but right. um, it's it's working. It's it's running me crazy. I can tell you that. I I run all over the place. Yeah, yeah. What what do you love most about the industry? I mean, you've been at it for what did you say, twenty five, twenty six years, something like that. I mean, what have you come to love? Thirty. About? Oh, is that what 31? it was? Thirty one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. I guess probably the people. I like the people. I like I like equipment. Sure. I like sure. whenever you uh, you get. I don't care if it's a boat motor or or a crane or an elevator um, or, or a reduction gear on a ship. Sure. Uh, when you see the when you see the parts move and understand when you look at it, you go, "That's crazy. How is that? How is that even possible? How's that working like that?" And uh, just to that's intriguing to me you know i uh i guess most of my most of my life i've been you know from the from the day that my stepdad showed up at the house and i had the lawnmower uh completely disassembled in the carport and he says uh, son what are you doing <laughs> and i said well i took the lawnmower apart and he says yeah i see that now but why and I said, well, just see how it worked. And he says, well, you better have that thing back together by Saturday because you got to cut the yard. <laughs> so did you? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I've i taken apart a lot of things that I could not get back together. So my hat goes off to you. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I cut a lot of yards as a kid. Yeah, a lot of yards. But that the, uh, yeah, the industry is... I guess probably it, it's a little bit like the, you know, a little like the military in that you got to show up, got to 
you know, kind of, it's not like, um, if you go to an office, um, I, I feel like, uh, you can leave the office and leave the work there. We don't leave, we don't leave our work. You know, most of the time I, I, um, I'm at work, you know, kind of all the time and the military was a little bit like that. And you're always thinking about it or I'm around somebody we're talking about you know, different things, uh, nuances or different occurrences or different types of equipment or rule changes or, you know, those kind of things. You easily gravitate towards people like that because of your, you know, similar interest, I guess. Yeah. But if we have those categories of people, like the, the people that are just here. Sure. And then the people that are, uh, I say, you know, the coasters, the people that are you know, just here and uh, then the people that are uh, really interested too, and they may be limited uh, by, right. you know, by their knowledge or by their education sometimes. Um, and then, then we got, you know, people that are go-getters. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we also have, uh, I think that we have seen that one of the things probably that, at least I like the least is that, you know, sometimes we get the most experienced guys that have the most knowledge and they are kind of on their own path. And uh, we used to call it short timers, okay. you know, yeah. uh, they get that, uh, they get, and, and sometimes they get complacent. Sure. And the complacency is, is one of the areas that, you know, can safety can really, uh, rear up on you and no, i'm sure you've seen plenty of those yeah. examples, situations um so let me ask you this what what are some of the biggest issues facing the industry overall as you see it um got to have enough people enough people to do the work mm -hmm. uh, but first um we've got to uh, make sure that we are attracting and maintaining and and keeping the people that we have right and and using them uh, recognizing what their abilities are um and using them to the best of their ability uh i see many times again i, I hate to keep referencing the military but um you, you see many times that um people are disturbed or they're upset about a person a way a particular person is um but you know i try and encourage them to say you know you 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 hired a person that is capable and you have failed them by not putting them in a position to be successful if you put them in a position to be successful and they're not then maybe they maybe it was the wrong choice but they need, do need to go do something else. Sure. Sure. Um, so I think that many times, um, and they're, you know, management, you could change management like underwear, you know. Oh, you yeah, need, it happens. You know, now, now we have private equity groups and, and whatnot. And um, uh, so some, hopefully now, and I know that I've been working uh, very very excited. I've uh, been working with uh, NAEC and their education and safety, um, and, and the, the a big push and a big effort to involve new people to sure. try and um, attract younger people to get into the industry. You know, we are the best blue collar. You know, paying. You know, you might. You might uh, fly fly an airplane for somebody or, or operate a crane once you get qualified. Right. But other than that, you know, you you uh, I don't think you'll hire in at somewhere, even at, at a helper. Um, you, you won't be able to match those kind of wages anywhere. And I know the union right now is also looking to attract um new uh, talent and or you know younger younger community and and uh, so they're going through that process right now i put something on linkedin which was copied you know from someone else um, that uh 
uh, the dates around where people can go and uh, I encourage anyone that if they're interested or think they might be interested in, um, you know, the construction type of business or, or something like this. But if you're if you're a nonchalant or you're, you know, you're, uh, you're not a very big, a, a quick pickup, you probably shouldn't participate in the uh, elevator industry. Yeah. No, I Although you. I you may you. be. You may be a numbers person and you be and it may be fine for the office. True. You know, True. we hired we hire a lot of people. Um, uh, going back to what I said about the 70s thing, we hire a lot of people right out of college to True. be in sales teams and stuff like that. And we train them to hire to to sell a certain way of you know, product or whatever. And and they they do what they're supposed to do. They they really get out there and get after it um, because that's what they're on. But unfortunately, they don't know anything about elevator equipment. That's one of the things that's changed over time. It used to be that the sales or account rep had some experience and they would go into the field for a little while and get some experience um, before they would go into the office. Gotcha. Okay. Those, those, um, those types of situation hire them because you know that you can bring them in at the base. You know, you don't have to right. pay somebody that's been all this experience. You'd have to pay for it. So that's kind of um, one of the things that probably, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I know that we saw one of the companies, you know, cut back quite a few positions this year or, trim them and refill them with somebody, you know, usually that means making less money. Right. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how it's going to work. I, you know, we'll see. We'll find out. Yeah. 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 What, uh, what would you say? I mean, if you had some advice to offer people who are, who are new to the industry, what would you, what would you tell them? Um, go to work. I mean, uh, as long as, you know, I'm super tickled. Uh, one of my nephews is in the, in the elevator business now, and he's, uh, he, he's, he's not a big talker. So he's, you know, nose down and, and, and gets the work done. And um, understanding having, having uh, some, uh, you know, getting your priorities straight and understanding that this requires your full attention and that, you know, sure. hard work is where you're going to get somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, practicing safety. That's, yeah. um, that's, that's the biggest thing. You got to stay alive to get that extra money. So true. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what, so what's one of the, the, I guess, as we, uh, kind of getting closer on our time here, but what's, What's one of the biggest lessons that you've learned throughout your career that you'd like to share with our listeners? Hmm. Um, the biggest lesson is, uh, is, I mean, really it is don't take anything for granted. Uh, don't take your safety for granted. Uh, don't take, don't take your paycheck for granted. Um, uh, you know, understand that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not today, you know, but there will be a time um, if you work long enough and you survive, there will be a time when the shoes on the other foot and um, you won't be able to go take an hour lunch or you won't be able to, um, you know, goof off or, you know, so uh, just uh, have, uh, have the, intestinal fortitude to to be a hard worker and and to keep your mind open uh and and learn one of the things that i think i try to encourage people all the time about is don't depend on other people telling you what the rules are right uh because there's always something lost in translation um have the information to know how to get the answers you need um, and then um, it doesn't mean that you won't listen to somebody else. It just means that you you listen with the knowledge of knowing at least what you're what you believe you already know or your perspective, 
and it may cause you to go back and do some more studying. Uh, it does for me. Um, so pay attention. And and uh, if you really if you really want to advance in in our industry, it is um, you know just about keeping up with the knowledge. Yeah, I mean, what knowledge. I hear you saying is take initiative. You know, you can't wait on somebody else to to shove the information into your head. Go find it. Go get it. Go you know, claim it. You know, make it yours, and then you can always add to it. Right. Yeah, that's right. Perfect, Chris. Thank you for being with me today. I appreciate your time. It's it's a uh, a pleasure for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Uh, it's uh, I I can talk about elevators all the time. I'm going to talk for about eleven hours straight tomorrow. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being on here and uh, wish you the best as you continue to build your business. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Elevator Careers podcast, sponsored by the All Red Group, a leader in elevator industry recruiting. You can check us out online at elevatorcareers.net. Please subscribe and until next time, stay safe.